In my design, the length of my wings is the same as the length of the body of my dove, excluding the head, so we can use the body for the measurements. I'm cutting off the edge of the felt piece I just made to make sure it's straight and even in thickness. Don't worry, we can use all the scraps later. Now I'm placing the dove's body diagonally on the felt piece and cutting out rectangle in the size of the area the body is taking up. For me, the length of my felt piece just happens to be almost perfect, so I have to make only one cut. Now cut this rectangle in half diagonally. Just in case you're worrying, my rectangle is 13 by 14 centimeters, but don't worry if yours is slightly bigger or smaller. And now we have two symmetrical pieces for our wings. We will attach them like this later on, but now we have to make the feathers. Also, don't worry about them being sloppy, they will hold their shape later when we will reinforce them with some more wool. Now let's cut off the upper vertex of our triangle. We need to round it up a bit to make more natural wing shape. I'm sorry for my camera going out of focus here, but we are now doing the same with the other piece. Just align it to this one and do the same cut. And again, here is how the wings will be going on our dial. As you can see, to make it more realistic, we need to cut off the bottom left vertex too. This time I'm doing it for both wings at the same time. Now it's time to create the feathers. I'm taking sharp scissors and making cuts along the longer side of my wings. I'm pointing my scissors in the direction the natural feathers would go and making a new cut approximately every 5 mm. Here is a close-up. As you can see, I'm trying to keep my scissors straight and not cut into the feather. If I did, it would be very easy to pull the feather off. You can always deepen the cuts if you feel like the feathers would be longer here. When I reach approximately the middle of this section, I turn my scissors upwards a bit, just to follow more natural direction of the feathers. I'm not cutting the end there, because it will be used for attaching the wing to the body. And now I'm creating some more cuts in the upper part of the wing. Be careful not to cut off the top feather. My cuts are not as deep as on the other side, and they are also taking up just half of this side. As you can see, the feathers are pretty rustic looking right now, so we have to cut off the right corner for almost every single one of them. Make sure you're cutting off just a tiny bit, not to make your feathers too fragile. And I'm doing the same for the upper side of my wing. Here we are cutting off even smaller bits. Here is the result. If you are making smaller dove, then maybe you don't need to soften these edges, but for this size it's really needed. This is the reason why it's important that your felt is still wet and recently felted, so the fibers are more open to some more felting. Wet felting these tiny feathers when felt sheet is completely dry will feel quite aggressive to the fiber and you risk damaging design. So I'm just adding a bit more water to the feathers and following up with soap. And then I'm gently rubbing each of the feathers between my fingers. Take your time and be gentle here. Do not twist the feather because you risk breaking it. And try to position your fingers at the cut edges to make them way rounder. It took me for about 4 minutes to go all the way around my wing. You can also use your textured cutting board if you have one here, but make sure you're rubbing only the feather part against it. If you rub the whole wing, you may get some more shrinkage and that is not wanted. Work on it for about 3 minutes or keep rubbing with your hands for another 5. 
I think the wet felting is making a huge difference and wings look really natural this way. And now you just have to repeat the whole process with another wing. Now let's add some more dimension to our wings by creating another piece in a similar fashion. Cut a piece from your felt shade that's approximately two thirds from your wing. Adjust the shape so it's a bit smaller than your wing. The bottom left part will be used to attach it so we can take some of the bulk off here just to make it easier to blend. Here you can see how I'm holding the scissors to cut off some of the thickness. And now I'm making cuts for the feathers just like we did before. Here is the result. And again we need to cut off some corners. It's really the same process we went through making the wings. You also need to wet felt it to soften the edges of the feathers. Later we are going to place it on the wings like this. Now just repeat the whole process for the second wing. The tail is built up from four rectangular pieces that have a base you will use to felt it on the body and a free edge with feathers. To measure the width of those pieces, just take a piece of felt and wrap it around the tail part of the body. The sides of this piece have to reach the middle of the body. All your pieces should be in this width. The length of the pieces varies. One piece will make the longest feathers. It has to have a base that is one quarter of the body size of the dog and a free edge in the same size. The smallest piece will be on the top of the tail and just one quarter of the body size. Then you're also gonna need two pieces that are somewhere in between. I have one that's already made so you will only see three on the screen now. To make the feathers just repeat the process we already did twice before. Make the cuts and cut off the corners, or sometimes both, if needed. Now add some more water and soap, and soften the edges of the feathers by wet felting them as gently as you can. When all the pieces are done, rinse them in warm and then cold water to get rid of all of the soap and let them air dry completely before you move on to the next part. 